on in. Let me know if you need anything, or take a seat by the fire and I'll send someone over. Welcome to the Winking Skeever, friend. People say there's a man wandering the streets near the Blue Palace. He seems distressed, but he's not making any sense. Remember the Winking Skeever next time your foot's sore. on an old madman who among you can help me my master has abandoned me abandoned his people and nothing I say can change his mind now he refuses to even see me he says I interrupt his vacation it's been so many years won't you please help last I saw him he was visiting a friend in the Blue Palace but no one as mundane as a Jarl. No, no, such people are below him. No, he went into the forbidden wing of the palace to speak with an old friend, said it had been ages since they had last had tea. Oh, and you'll need the hip bone. It's very important. No entering Pelagius's wing without that. Oh, you just don't understand. Without him, I am not free. Without him, I am doomed. All of his empire shall fall into chaos. Without his guidance, our homeland is falling apart. North wages war against South. The Holy Flame flickers and dies. We need his return. Oh, but I'm sure he'll repay you when he comes to his senses. His favor is a powerful, powerful thing. And so very worth any inconveniences. He is a great man, but one rarely praised. He rules twin empires that span the length and breadth of our minds. All know him, but few can name him. But he has forbidden me from saying his name. He says it distracts him, and woe to those who draw his ire. But you will know him when you see him. He's the one who made me like this. He stays in the Pelagius wing of the Blue Palace. The doors are locked. And only Falk Firebeard can grant entry. But I hear the maids, Una and Erdi, know how to enter it for cleaning. Surely they could help for such an important matter. Oh, thank you. Divines, bless your kind heart. All right, then. Do you have business with the court? Absolutely not. That wing has been sealed for hundreds of years, and for good reason. They say the ghost of Pelagius the Mad still haunts it. Ghost or not, there are reminders of his dark rule that are best left buried away. Feel free to return to me with questions. The Blue Palace is an open forum. Hello. Just tidying up. Oh, I'd get in trouble for that. It's not allowed. Besides, it's scary in there. Well, I suppose in that case it's okay to let you in. But only briefly. Be careful and come right back. Don't mess anything up while you're here. 
Watch your feet. We just clean there. Someday a gallant hero will ride up and take me away. Someday. right through me. Besides, I have so many things to do. So many undesirables to contend with. Naysayers, buffoons, detractors. Why, my, my headsman hasn't slept in three days. You are far too hard on yourself, my dear, sweet, homicidally insane Pelagius. What would the people do without you? Dance, sing, smile, <laughs> grow old. You, are the best septum that's ever ruled. Well, except for that Martin fella. But he turned into a dragon god, and that's hardly sporting. You know, I was there for that whole sordid affair. Marvelous time! Butterflies, blood, a fox, a severed head, ho ho ho, and the cheese! To die for. Yes, yes, as you've said countless times before. How to rump? Well, then, if you're going to be like that, perhaps it's best I take my leave. A good day to you, sir. I said good day! Yes, yes, go. Leave me to my ceaseless responsibilities and burdens. How rude! Can't be bothered to host an old friend for a decade or two. Pelagius the third? Now, surely even you know about Pelagius's decree. On his deathbed, oh, and this was inspired, he forbade death! That's right! Death outlawed! Inside the mind of Pelagius, silly. Oh, is it your first time? Really? Oh, oh, what kind of message? A song? A summons? Wait, uh, I know! A death threat written on the back of an Argonian concubine! Ah, those are my favorites. Well, spit it out, mortal! I haven't got an eternity. Actually, I do. Little joke. But seriously, what's the message? you now by whom wait don't tell me i want to guess was it molag no no little tim the toy maker's son huh what the ghost of king lysandus ah oh, or was it one yes stanley the talking grapefruit from passwall <laughs> i'm wrong on all accounts aren't i ha <laughs> no matter honestly i don't want to know why ruin the surprise? But more to the point, do you, tiny, puny, expendable little mortal, actually think you can convince me to leave? Because that's crazy! You do realize who you're dealing with here. Surely, good guess. But only half right. I'm a mad god. THE mad god, actually. It's a family title. Gets passed down from me to myself every few thousand years. Now you 
You can call me Anne-Marie. But only if you're partial to being flayed alive and having an angry immortal skip rope with your entrails. If not, then call me Shea Gorath, Daedric, Prince of Madness. Charmed. Now that's the real question, isn't it? Because honestly, how much time off could a demented Daedra really need? So, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to leave. That's right, I'm done. Holiday complete. Time to return to the humdrum day to day. On one condition. You have to find the way out first. Well, good luck with that. Ha! I do love it when the mortals know they're being manipulated. Makes things infinitely more interesting. Dare to take a look around? This is not, I dare say, the Solitude Botanical Gardens. Have you any idea where you are? Where you truly are? Welcome to the deceptively verdant mind of the Emperor Pelagius III. That's right! You're in the head of a dead, homicidally insane monarch! <laughs> now, I know what you're thinking. Can I still rely on my swords and spells and sneaking and all that nonsense? Sure. Sure. Or you could use... The Wabachak! Huh? Huh? Didn't see that coming, did you? Do you mind? I'm busy doing the fish stick. It's a very delicate state of mind. Ah! Now this is a sad path. Pelagius hated and feared many things. Assassins, wild dogs, the undead, pumpernickel. But the deepest, keenest hatred was for himself. The attacks he makes on himself can be seen here fully. They're always carried out on the weakest part of his fragile self. The self-loathing enhances Pelagius' anger. Ah, but his confidence will shrink with every hit. You must bring the two into balance. You're as good as dead. Never should have come here. Here we go. Here we go. It's a big problem! Maybe if you shrunk the whole thing down a little first. Here we go! Wonderfully done! Pelagius is finally go, ready man. to love himself and continue hating everything. I see you've been minding your own business. So, how's the mind business? Ah, wonderful, wonderful. Why waste all that hatred on yourself when it can so easily be directed at others? But someone still has quite a bit to do. Hmm.
you have headed down the path of dreams. Unfortunately for you, Pelagius suffered night terrors from a young age. All you need to do is find something to wake our poor Pelagius up. You'll find his terrors easy to repel, but persistent. Something to crow about. With Pelagius up and about, you're moving right along. We'll both be home in no time. Yes? Pelagius stopped by and mentioned he hated you, or I mentioned he hated you, and he agreed. Oh, I'm so happy for you. My, what a burden to have carried. But you've done it. You've conquered your own inner demons. Bravo. Um, you, it didn't mean yourself. You meant Pelagius. Well. Same congratulations apply. Just, you know, for what you did for the insane emperor. Conquering paranoia should be a snap after that ordeal, hmm? Good for me. I find everyone being out to get you so terribly entertaining. <laughs> you might find it less so. You see, Pelagius' mother was, well, let us say, oh. unique. Although I suppose, in the grand scheme of things, she was fairly average for a septum. That woman wielded fear like a cleaver. Or did she wield a cleaver and make people afraid? I never get that part right. Oh, but she taught her son well. Pelagius learned at a very early age that danger could come from anywhere, at any time, delivered by anyone. The objective here is simple, you simpleton. Use your Wabajak to defeat the enemy while they do the same.
on the big one. Hmm. Your creature doesn't appear to be faring any better than before. We think train is all. Figure it out. With the threat gone, Pelagius is under the delusion that he's safe, which means you've helped him out, sort of. And we're that much closer to home. saying I'm not going to feel what you have to like or something like that hmm fixed is such a subjective term I think treated is far more appropriate don't you like one does to a rash or an arrow in the face ah but no matter heartless mortal that you are you've actually succeeded and survived I am first to honor my end of the bargain so Congratulations! You're free to go. I have been known to change my mind. So, go. Really. Pelagius Septum the Third, once the mad emperor of Tamriel, now so boringly sane. I always knew he had it in him. Well, I suppose it's back to the Shivering Isles. A trouble Haskell can get into while I'm gone simply boggles the mind. Let's make sure I'm not forgetting anything. Clothes, check. Beard, check. Luggage. Luggage. Now where did I leave my luggage? Master, you've taken me back. Does this mean we're going home? Oh, happy times. I can't wait to... Yes, yes, that's quite enough celebration. Let's send you ahead, shall we? As for you, a little mortal minion, feel free to keep the Wabajack as a symbol of my... I'll just take the damn thing. You take care of yourself now. And if you ever find yourself up in New Sheo, do look me up. We can share a strawberry tart. Ha <laughs> ha! Ta-ta! Oh, hello. Just tidying up. Are you my gallant hero? Have you come to whisk me away to a life of adventure and romance? A change has swept into solitude, like a breeze off the ocean. The thieves' guilt has come.
Let me know if you need anything, or take a seat by the fire, and I'll send someone over. You look like someone who can hold their liquor. How about a friendly contest to win a staff? If it's work you need, how about chopping up some wood for the fires? If you're looking for a challenge, you've come to the right place. Ha! <laughs> we'll see about that. This is a special brew. Very strong stuff. Let's get started. I enjoy this work well I'll enough, start round but I'm one. ready to retire. The hatch. I've been thinking of selling the Ivy Solda. Anyway, what do you need? Sadia, dear? Your turn. Yes, Mom. Don't forget to polish One those down, my paper. friend. One down. Oh, yes, Mom. And another one for me. What do you need, Hansel? And how about you? Mikhail's son. How about something with So a says of you. I you think know, I've hit my limit on these things. Tell you what, so one more and you win the contest. To share off my customer's son? Lively. Keep it lively. Wow. Yes. You've really done it. The staff is what yours. The sweet maiden fair from Hadleyshire. You know, I you're a fun person to drink received. with. I know this great little Especially place where the wine the flows house. like water. We should uh, head there. Excellent hey, you don't look so good. Wake up. That's right. It's time to wake up, you drunken blasphemer. I see. So, you don't remember fondling the statuary, then? I'm guessing you also don't remember coming in here and blathering incoherently about marriage or a goat. Which means you don't remember losing your temper and throwing trash all over the temple. Well, you were deep in your cups when you got here. You were ranting, but most of it was slurry. You said something about Rorik's state. I'm sorry. The Temple of Dibella is closed. You can receive your blessing if you wish, but the other sisters are in seclusion. You! You've got a lot of nerve showing yourself in this town again. What do you have to say for yourself? Sorry's not good enough. Not while my Gled is still out there alone and afraid. You kidnapped her and sold her to that giant. You're damn right it does. I'll never breed another prize-winning goat like Gledda. And don't you think of coming back to Rorikstead until you get her back from that giant.
You really don't remember stealing a goat and selling her to a giant? Are you thick? Go get her! At least she's bound to follow you back. You smell just like the fermented feet she likes. You mentioned something like that when you were running off with my goat. Tell you what, you bring back my goat, and maybe I'll give a damn about your staff. See you. Stoke the fire. Take a seat and get the cold out. You talked to Reldith yet? She's like a mother to me. You didn't seem to need either to sell Gleda to the giant in the first place. I think you'll figure it out. Father, how old were you when you left home? I know where this is Okay, going. okay. Most of what you said didn't make sense, but you left a note. The only bit I could read said, after repaying Isolde in Whiterun. That's all I know. See you. I'm afraid of is wasting my life on this farm. Yes, that's your mother's side of the family talking. Just stay on for one more season. That's all I ask. <sighs> the city's changed, friend. Thieves' guild is on the rise. We've got a firm foothold here in White Rock. So, you're finally back. Look, I've been patient, but you still owe me. It's not about the money, really. I wouldn't have given you the wedding ring on credit if you weren't so obviously in love. But if there isn't going to be a wedding, the least you can do is give the ring back. That was one of my best pieces. You went right out to give it to your fiancé. Don't you even remember where you left her? And after you told me that sweet story of how you met in Witchmist Grove, I can see why she left you. How could you forget? It was the sweetest story I'd ever heard. You met at the full moon, under the biggest tree in Witchmist Grove, surrounded by fireflies. It was straight out of a storybook. Farewell. for you to return, to consummate our love. What? You want it for that hussy Esmeralda with the dark feathers, don't you? I won't let her have you.
it's a fine day with you around. Excellent. Sorry it didn't work out. I know how excited you were for the wedding. You kept saying it would be a huge ceremony at Morvenskar. You said you even had some magic staff that would handle all of the guests. Farewell.
you're here. I was beginning to think you might not make it. I thought you might not remember your first trip here. You had a big night. I think you've definitely earned the staff. Oh, the Hagraven feather and so on. You can throw all those out. You see, I really just needed something to encourage you to go out into the world and spread merriment. <clears throat> Need something? I am sanguine. Daedric Prince of Debauchery. I know, I know. How could I lie to you? Well, how could I trust you until we've shared a few drinks? But it wasn't long before I realized you'd make a more interesting bearer of my not-quite-holy staff than this waste of flesh. Let's be honest here. I don't always think my decisions through. But you, you're going places. Maybe a little influence from your old Uncle Sanguine could help adjust your course a bit. My pleasure. But I think it's time for you to go. No fun keeping you locked up in here with the staff. If it's work you need, how about chopping up some wood for the fire? I'm just out and about, love. The bannered mare can do without me. I don't get much time off from the tavern, but I enjoy it when I do. How goes the begging today, Brenuin? That's right. Mop the town beggar like everyone else. But I've got one. But he willingly gave up this existence, that we might better understand the vagaries of life and death. It is through the ebb and flow of this cosmic tide that we find renewal, and in the end, peace. May the spirit of Lavinia and all those who have left this world and its suffering know the beloved serenity of the Therese. And may we one day rejoin them in eternity. My husband Matthias and I tend corpse-like farm. A sad time. Our daughter. Our little girl. She hadn't seen her tenth winter. She was. He ripped her apart, like a saber cat tears a deer. We barely found enough of her to bury. Sinding came true as a laborer. Seemed like a decent man. He's stewing in the pit while we figure out what to do with him. If you've got the stomach to look at him, what could drive a man to do something like this? The cemetery is ancient. It's been here longer than the town. I'm no scholar, 
but I know that a lot of battles have been fought here over the course of history. After each battle, more dead were buried and the graveyard got bigger. I heard it's now the biggest graveyard in Skyrim. Yes, and I couldn't tell you why. My wife and I think there's some dark magic at work. Or perhaps R.K.'s influence is strong here and he likes to keep it this way. I just don't understand what kind of man does that. Need something? Yes? Come to gawk at the monster. Believe me, it wasn't anything I ever intended to do. I just... lost control. I tried to tell them, but none of them believed me. It's all on account of this blasted ring. This is the Ring of Hersing. I was told it could let me control my transformations. Perhaps it used to, but I'll never know. Hersing didn't care for my taking it and threw a curse on it. I put it on and the changes just came to me. I could never guess when. It would be at the worst times, like with the little girl. I don't suppose there's a point in keeping the secret if I'm going to die in here anyway. I'm sure you've heard of men who shift to beasts under the influence of the moons. I am one of them. A werewolf. It's my secret and my shame. That's why I wanted the ring. It was said to give men like me control. Now, I may look like a man, but I still feel the animal inside of me as strong as ever. I had just come into Falkreath. They needed some help work in the mill, and I thought that would be something safe, something I could do. When I saw the little girl, I was just... I could feel it coming on. I could taste her. I needed to hunt, but this pitiful, limited body wasn't meant for hunting. Slow, no claws, weak, mashing teeth for shoeing cud. I held in my rage as long as I could, but it boiled inside of me. She looked so fragile, helpless prey, and then I... I feel terrible about what happened, about what I did. It would probably be best for everyone if I just went away. Do you not know the Daedric Lord of the Hunt? He revels in the chase and also gave the gift of lycanthropy to mortals, a powerful force not to be crossed as I learned too late. I've been looking for a way to appease Hersing. There is a certain beast in these lands, large, majestic. It's said that Hersing will commune with whoever slays it. I tracked it into these woods, but then I had my accident with the child. I want to beg his forgiveness, give him back the ring. But while I'm stuck in here, the beast wanders free. Oh, my. You would do this for me? Here, take it. I, I don't want anything to do with this wretched thing anymore. Seek out the beast. He wanders these woods. Bring him down and... Well, the Lord of the Hunt should smile on you. I wish you luck. But you leave here while I still have my skin. 
Should our paths cross again, I will remember your kindness. Farewell. Heard they're reforming the Dawn Guard. Vampire hunters or something in the old fort near Rifter. Well met, Hunter. I am the spirit of the hunt. Just one glimpse of the glorious stalker that your kind calls Hercene. I may consider it, but you must first do a service for my glory. The one who stole it has fled to what he thinks is his sanctuary. Just as a bear climbs a tree to escape the hunt, but only ends up trapping himself. Seek out this rogue shifter. Tear the skin from his body and make it an offering to me. There is no retribution in the hunt. It is not vengeance I seek, but the blood course of a living hunt. There are others who would gladly accept my favor. They will hunt him while you delay your choice.
This doesn't concern me. Now. Walk away. Now. Now remove. <laughs> never should have come here. <laughs> <laughs> the Blood Moon called you, fellow hunter. The prey is strong, stronger than the hunters. But more will come. Bring him down for the glories of Lord Hersin. I'd see you again. And I would deserve it, wouldn't I? I can't stop you if that's what you want to do. Hersing is too powerful. But if you spare me, I can be a powerful ally to you. And I would promise to never return to civilized life. I know now that I can't live among people. Thank the gods. Now let's deal with these other hunters. We hunt together. Never thought I'd see you again. New hand touches the beacon. Listen, hear me and obey. 
A foul darkness has seeped into my temple. A darkness that you will destroy. Return my beacon to Mount Kilcreath. And I will make you the instrument of my cleansing light. Never thought I'd see you again. What was that? Made me pray. Look out! Never thought I'd see you again. Thank you for your help. I will make my home here, away from anyone I might hurt. Never thought I'd see you again. Never thought I'd see you again.
as the Blood Moon called you, fellow hunter. The prey is strong. Stronger than the hunters. Ah! May you walk on warm sands. You... why? Never thought I'd see you again. And I would deserve it, wouldn't I? I can't stop you if that's what you want to do. Her sing is too powerful. But if you spare me, I can be a powerful ally to you. And I would promise to never return to civilized life. I know now that I can't live among people. So be it. See ya. Done well, Hunter. You've done well, Hunter. And found my favor. That skin will serve you well, child. Look more closely at it. My glory shall protect you from all this world's grievances. Good hunting. see a dog out there. Oh well. The blacksmith is offering a reward for a dog he saw on the road. I was hoping you'd seen it. I guess I'll stay on the lookout. Keep your nose clean while you're here, outsider. see a hound on the road. Fine, strong creature that's been wandering near town. There's one out on the road. 
I can't afford to chase him down, but I could use a fierce, loyal beast to keep him company. If you were willing to retrieve him for me, I'd give you some fresh meat to attract him out on the road. Oh. Smart to demand something up front. Some gold now, and some when I have my dog. Here's the meat. Steel's good, but loyalty's better. I'm loyal to Dengear first, and the Empire second. You are exactly what I was looking for! Skyrim is now host to giant flying lizards and two-legged cat men. And you surprised by me? Yeah, I just talked, and I'm continuing to do so. You see, my name is Bobbis, and I have a problem I think you can help sort out. I know, I know. Wars to fight, dragons to confront, guild business to conduct. Sheesh! Listen. When you're ready to do something useful, find me outside Hamai Shane in Fall Breeze. My master and I had a bit of a falling out. We got into an argument and it got rather heated. He's kicked me out until I find someone who can settle our disagreement. That's where you come in. Thank you. Now, since he banished me, Vile's been rather weak. He can't manifest very far from one of his shrines. I know there's a cult that worships him at Hamar's Shane. We should be able to talk to him there. If this works out, I'll make sure you're rewarded. Hey, just don't trust any offer he makes you, okay? I guess you could say I got on his nerves. I tend to be the voice of reason, and he finds that uh, irksome. He couldn't just kill me, you see. We're technically part of each other. But he was able to banish me from his domain. Of course, because of our separation, Vile is now much weaker. I guess he figured it was a small price to pay for not having to listen to me anymore. What was that? Thought I heard something. Oh! <laughs> 
Means, let's hear it. It's the least I could do since you already helped me grant one final wish for my last worshippers. They were suffering so from vampirism and begged me for a cure. Then you came and ended their misery. I couldn't have planned it better myself. So, what's your heart's desire? What kind of deal can we strike? That insufferable pup! Forget it! Request denied! No deal! I'm glad to be rid of him. Even if it does mean I'm stuck in this pitiful shrine... ...in the back end of... ...nowhere. Well... ...perhaps there is a way he could earn his place back at my side? Maybe. But no promises. There's an axe. An incredibly powerful axe. An axe powerful enough for me to have quite a bit of fun indeed. If you bring it to me, I'll grant you my boon. No strings attached, no messy surprises. At least not for you. As I recall, it's resting in Rhyme Rock Burrow. Barbers can lead you right to it. Little Mutt might even earn his place back at my side. In Rhyme Rock Burrow, there's an artifact called the Rueful Axe. Bring it to me, and I'll take Barbers back. Simple as that. One of Clavicus's little chests, a wizard named Sebastian Lord had a daughter who worshipped her seed. When the daughter became a werewolf, it drove Sebastian over the edge. He couldn't stand to see his little girl take on such a bestial form. The wizard wished for the ability to end his daughter's curse. <laughs> Clavicus gave him an axe.
The axe isn't the only item dear old Glavicus has. Give him the rueful axe, and once we're reunited, the mask of Clavicus Vile will be yours. companion retrieving the ancient artifact for the prince. It's almost storybook. Ah, oh, but it almost seems a shame to give a weapon like that away, doesn't it? I suppose I could be persuaded to let you keep it, but only if you use the axe to kill Barbus. Simple as that. No fun at all. Guess I'll have to make my own fun elsewhere. And with the pup back, I'll be restored to my full power. There's a whole world just waiting for me! I knew I could trust you. Yeah, yeah, dog gets master, master gets cosmic axe. Everyone's happy. Just get over here, Matt. Don't worry, I'll make sure he sees the light. I trusted you, now you trust me. Ah, oh, that feels so much better. You forget how nice supreme power feels until you've been stuck in a cave for a few years. It's a shame you wished for something so dull as me taking back the mutt. Quite the lack of imagination on your part. A lack of ambition like that really ought to be punished. Perhaps by turning you into a worm. Or maybe a few decades of... Uh... Oh, fine. Have my boon and be done with it. Got more interesting deals to make anyway. Leave it once. Uber, no. This may be what we need. We need nothing from outsiders. Gamars will provide for us. We cannot carry on this way. You know we are doomed if we do not do something. Gamars charged me with keeping outsiders away from Larkisburg. Would you have me disobey him? You were charged with keeping us inside the walls. Have faith, Uber. I only wish the best for our tribe. Fine. It's your neck. Forgive Ugar's harsh words. She's merely doing as she's been told. Please, our tribe suffers, and we need help. Our chief Yamaz was once a strong and proud warrior. Now he is stricken, cursed. He is weak, and so our tribe is weak. The giants sense this and intrude on our territory. Now they assault our very home. Yamars refuses help, but I sense that you may be just what we need. Yamars has demanded we stay inside the walls. We cannot leave. I must petition Malakath for relief. This curse must be lifted. But I cannot travel to Malakath's shrine. The ritual must be done here, 
and I do not have the materials I need. I beg of you, can you bring me troll fat and a daedra heart? I have no wish to depend on a stranger, but I have no choice. And a daedra, of course. You do not know of Malakath? He is the Keeper of Oaths, the Master of Curses. He is quick to anger and slow to forgive. One who wrongs Malakath is one who will endure great torment in return. He demands loyalty and strength from his orcs. We have tried to please him, but he is now angry with us, and so we suffer. Please hurry. We are counting on you. I will stay right here and wait for you to bring me what I need. Excellent. Now, you must come with me. You become a part of this. You must be present for the ritual. It is time, you Mars. You bring an outsider here, and now insist I call on Malakath for help when he has clearly forsaken me. You try my patience, Atub. Doing nothing will not grant our tribe relief from this curse. We must try. Uh, fine. Let's get this over with. Tribe has survived this long without you interfering. We'll ritual. be fine. Great Malakath, we beseech you, aid us in our time of need. Why are we bothering with this? You pathetic weakling! What's that? Malakath has heard my pleas. He speaks to us. You dare summon me, Yamars? What? What is this? You don't deserve to call yourself an orc. You're weak, you're small, and you're an embarrassment. You let giants, giants, overrun my shrine. Bring me their leader's club as an offering, and I might release you from this curse. So it will be. Malakath has spoken, Yamars. Your path is clear. Very well. You, outsider, come here. I want a word. This is all your fault, you know. I'm stuck fighting a giant now, thanks to you. So you're going to help me. You're going with me, and you're going to make sure I don't have any trouble reaching that giant. Don't worry, I'll make it worth your while. Thanks to you, I've just been issued a challenge in front of my whole tribe by a Daedric Prince, no less. I can't ignore that. I didn't say I wouldn't fight the giant. I just said you're going to help me get to it. Meet me outside Fallowstone Cave. You clear the way to the giant for me, and I'll make sure you get paid for it. Let's just get this over with. Outlanders should mind their own business. Weeks? Longer? Feels like an age has gone by. I haven't slept in so long. Oh, of course. Because Malakath would take pity on us if only a useless outsider would lend us a hand. Please, help your Mars. Do whatever you can. Our tribe depends on you.
Our tribe has survived this long without you interfering. We'll be fine. Let's just get this over with. If there's a chance this will save me, then I'm taking it. I'll lead the way, but you'd better back me up. Let's get this over with. All right, I'll go kill this giant. Unless, of course, you'd like to make some extra gold. I'm tired. I haven't slept well in weeks. You kill the giant. Bring me the hammer. We go back to Lagerspur. I tell everyone I did it. You keep your mouth shut, and I pay you. Handsomely. Fine. Then wait here. This should only take a second. Is someone there? Yamaris was a fool. A 
always trying to scheme his way out of responsibility. Well, the Giants took care of him. And you took care of the Giants. Two problems solved at once. Now, take Shagro's hammer back to Larnishburg, and we'll see about whipping the rest of them into shape. Malakath blesses this land for the orcs, and the orcs alone. But what of your Mars? I see. He did not survive. He... he died well? Ah, that is good to hear then. Your Mars was a coward and a weakling. His deceitful ways have cost you all greatly. So he has been punished. And what of us? What fate shall we suffer? You'll have to prove yourselves, but I'm willing to give you a chance. Gullerzo's in charge now. Let's hope he's a better chief. You, place that hammer on the shrine. You're the only one who's proven worthy in all of this. What are you doing that for? May your next fight bring you victory, friend. I will do my best to lead the tribe, but I don't know why Malakath chose me. The days of staying within Lagerspur's walls are over. May your weapons be sharp, and your prey fresh. Lagersper will not soon forget what you have done. We have a second chance, thanks to you. We have lived in Skyrim since before the Nords came. Our way is simple. All work to make the tribe strong. Only the bravest are allowed to lead, and to marry. A great chief is able to attract many wives and raise bold children. Wise women like myself are mothers of chieftains. We guide the tribe and advise our kin on what is most pleasing to Malakath. Mm -hmm.
All right. I'll go kill this giant. Unless, of course... All right. I'll go kill this giant. Unless, of course, you'd like to make some extra gold. I'm tired. I haven't slept well in weeks. You kill the giant. Bring me the hammer. We go back to Lagerspur. I tell everyone I did it. You keep your mouth shut, and I pay you. Handsomely. Good. I'll be waiting right here. Curses aren't enough. Now must I suffer you too? What is it? Weeks? Longer? Feels like an age has gone by. I haven't slept in so long. Oh, of course. Because Malakath would take pity on us if only a useless outsider would lend us a hand. Wouldn't want anyone finding out. Stronghold criminal. You must pay in gold or blood. Fight well, and I'll make sure your corpse is not dishonored. You're mine! Mercy! Yamaris was a fool, always trying to scheme his way out of responsibility. But you took care of him and the giants. Two problems solved at once. Now, take Shagro's hammer back to Largishburg, and we'll see about whipping the rest of them into shape. We won't kill you, Outlander. You have no business in our stronghold, Outlander. But what of your Mars? I see. He did not survive. He... He died well. What? Why would he do such a thing? Your Mars was a coward and a weakling. His deceitful ways have cost you all greatly.
Ascendant would look lovely on my system. Is someone there? Mission is coming. You've stepped for us long enough! By the Divines, the Forsworn are here in the city! Everyone, stay back. The Markov City Guard has this horn under control. There are no Forsworn here. Did you see that, madman? A Forsworn agent. Here in the city. Oh, damn. Another body to get rid of. Did you see that, madman? A Forsworn agent. Here in the city. Did you just see that woman getting attacked in front of us? We're closed. This has ruined my entire day. Did you see that, Madman? Margaret. A he, sworn he killed her. Here right in, in front of me. I'm sorry. I don't think I can bear to sell anything right now. What's happening to this city? Yes. The house. You want that ending? You're closing the stall. And you don't know anything about this house. You want to give up now? No. Anyone seen entering or leaving? Any strange lights or unusual noises? It's abandoned, and it's always been abandoned. Excuse me, do you know anything about this house? Seen anyone enter or leave? Damn, it's like everyone in the city has amnesia. I'm with the Vigil of Stendar. I believe this house might have been used for Daedra worship. Evil rites and so forth. I was actually just about to head on inside. Be good to have someone watch my back. Follow me and keep your eyes open. Daedra are powerful creatures and tricksters. Never know what you'll find. Fresh food. No wood rot on the furniture. Someone's been here. Recently. But the people I asked say no one enters or leaves. Wait, did you hear that? I think it came this way. That's it. Something's inside the house. Come on, we're getting to the bottom of this. Come out! We know you're here! There's another door. See if you can get it open. Stendar's mercy! This isn't an ordinary Tedra. We have to get help. Weak. He's weak. You're strong. Crush him. You first. Come on. Let's go. Yes, further into the bowels. So close, your prize is waiting. Fool! 
Did you think Molek Baal, the Lord of Domination, would so easily reward you? What do you see from that little cage? Speak! Rusted. Dry. There was a time when this mace dripped with the blood of the feeble and the worthless. But a Daedric Lord has his enemies, and my rival Boethia had her priest desecrate it, left it here to decay until you came. Revenge? No, I want submission. I want the priest who did this to bend his knee and give me his soul. He comes by to perform Boethia's insulting rites at my altar, but he's been missing, captured and bound, left to rot. Save him. Let him perform his rite one more time. And when he does, we will be waiting for him.
that. Do your work. <laughs> You there? Are you here to kill me? Slay the mighty Lowgrove! While he sits tied and helpless. Coward, you're nothing. Nothing! Rescue. <laughs> no one knew where I was when I was taken. Who sent you? Dark mistress? She sent you? Oh, wait, wait. Bullock Paul's altar? Of course. I have to get to Markarth at once. Cut me loose. That's all I could do, you idiot. What are you waiting for? Oh, freedom. Now get out of my way. I have a task to attend to. Paul, you think you can best Boethius faithful? I have won this contest before. Ah, but I have my own champion this time, Logroth. What? You? Mortal, I give you my mace in all its rusted spitefulness. Crush the spirit from Logroth's bones. Make him bend to me. I'll never submit. Do your worst, monster. Someone there? But I won't bend. Never! Do your worst, monster. I'll never submit. I won't bend. Never! Do your worst, monster! Do your worst, monster! I'll never submit! Help! <laughs> you mortals and your frail, limp, pathetic bodies! Try it again! Coletta! A swing? Call that a, a swing? You, you'll pay for this. I won't surrender. Call that a, a swing? Oh, you, you'll pay for this. No more. No more. 
I submit, Molag Ball. I submit. You bend to me? Yes. You pledge your soul to me? Yes. You forsake the weak and pitiful Boethia? Yes. You're mine now, Logrolf. Kill him. No. Again. Don't kill me. I don't want to die. No more. No more. Never should have come here. No. Not again. Don't kill me. I don't want to die. The mace of Molek Bal. I give you its true power, mortal. When your enemies lie broken and bloody before you, know that I will be watching. Know your place, mortal, or Molag Val may just send another champion to claim his mace from your broken corpse. Now, I have a soul in oblivion to claim. Take care of the house while I'm gone. <laughs> I've been looking for you. Got something I'm supposed to deliver. Your hands only. Let's see here. There's a new museum opening up in Dawnstar. The owner is asking me to hand out invitations to travelers. Ah, a letter from the Jarl. Moving up in the world, eh? Looks like that's it. Got to go. Nope. Sorry. Nothing. Ancestors wouldn't want this, Silas. Why should I hide from it? This is my family's legacy. It's the past. Dead oaths on dead lips. Let it stay there. The museum is open in Medina. I beg you, don't go into Silas's museum. Silas comes from one of the oldest families in Dawnstar. They have a complicated history. Several of his ancestors belong to the Mythic Dawn, the cult that almost destroyed Tamriel. His family's involvement was only found out well after the crisis had died down, but it still ruined their reputation. They were outcasts. And now Silas is back, and this museum to the Mythic Dawn is his way of trying to rebuild his family's pride. It's misguided. Not a student of history, I see. It's for the best. They're a group that should be forgotten. The only thing you need to know is that they almost destroyed the world. And they were stopped. A long time ago. That museum is a mistake.
And here comes my first visitor. The Museum of the Mythic Dawn is open, friend. Never mind that. Medina is a good woman, but I have my own reasons for opening this museum, and I'm not changing my mind. I have a collection of artifacts from the group that toppled an empire. Their importance to history cannot be forgotten. Why don't you come in? You can browse the displays and we can talk. I have a job you look perfect for. Let's talk inside. Feel free to look around. Come talk to me when you're ready to discuss that job I mentioned. The tapestries hung here and outside were found in hideouts, where members of the Mythic Dawn would meet and plot. The cult's greatest accomplishment was the assassination of the Septim Dynasty and the opening of the Oblivion Gates. Those robes were worn during the Mythic Dawn secret meetings, where they plotted to bring the Daedra Mehrunes Dagon into Tamriel. Each bolt of yarn used to make the robe was colored with a dye made from sacrificial blood. Ah, yes. That scabbard. Notice the insignia? An oblivion gate. A key symbol of Merun's Dagon, the patron Daedra of the Mythic Dawn. That burned paper is all that remains of the fabled Mysterium Xarxes, the blasphemous book written by Merun's Dagon himself. It's said that Mankar Cameron used the book to open a portal to a paradise where all his followers would live forever. The commentaries on the Mysterium Xarxes were written by the Mythic Dawn cult leader, Mankar Cameron. He promised a paradise awaited his followers when they died, that they would be reborn by Merun's Dagon's side. Did you have any questions about the museum, or would you rather talk business? It's no secret that my family were once members of the Mythic Dawn. One of my forefathers was even chosen to assassinate Uriel Septim himself. We hid from our past for years, became tradesmen, people of coin and influence. But I realized that the Mythic Dawn's importance, our importance, to history cannot be denied. I'll see everyone in Tamriel remember that for a moment, we held the fate of the world in our hands, for good or ill. And here you are. I hope you found the museum to your liking. They were worshippers of Merun's Dagon, the Daedric Lord of Destruction and Change. The mythic dawn killed Uriel Septim VII and his heirs, triggering the events that led to the Oblivion Crisis when the Daedra invaded Tamriel. All that remains of the infamous cult, I've gathered in my museum. Ah, an excellent question. Merun's Dagon is the Daedric Lord of Change, Destruction, and Ambition. Dagon's mythic dawn cult killed the Septim Dynasty and opened the Oblivion Gates into Tamriel. They called it the Oblivion Crisis. A little history first. After the Oblivion Crisis, a number of groups cropped up dedicated to wiping out the remnants of the Mythic Dawn. One of these groups found Merun's Razor, the artifact of Dagon. They split it into three fragments and pledged to keep them apart forever. That was almost 150 years ago, and the pieces are still being kept by the descendants of that group. And they're right here, in Skyrim. At least two of the owners, Gonzal and Draskua, are dangerous marauders. And the third owner, Jorgen. I only know he lives in Morfar. Here are my notes about them. I'll gladly pay you for getting the pieces any way you can. No questions asked. 
The razor is Merun's Dagon's personal artifact. It has always heralded bloody change and carnage. It's held many names. Dagger of the Final Wounds, Bane of the Righteous, the Kingslayer. The Mythic Dawn worshipped Dagon as a god. Having his razor would be invaluable to my collection. Good luck finding the fragments. I wasn't born in Skyrim, but when I served in the Legion, this land became my home. Unless it's about the mill, I don't have time to talk. Too much to do. The mill is my responsibility, and that's what I care about. That's all. Understand? The world's going mad, and our Jarl does what? She hides inside with her visions. We need a leader, not some mystic. Don't know what you're talking about, stranger. I've heard of him. My father had suspicions about his connection to the mythic Dawn. Guess they were true. I don't need this. My family wasted eight generations keeping that razor safe from a dead cult. As far as I care, I can stay locked in my house. I don't care, but my ancestors do. You can't have it. Easy. Here. These are the keys. The hilt is in a chest in my house. Just don't hurt anyone. See ya. What is it? Do you have one of the razor fragments? Did you try the grip? Isn't it eerie how it seems to mold itself into your hand? Here's your gold. We just need the pommel and the shards of the blade now. I'll just be tending the museum if you need me.
can take you.
It's strange holding a hilt that isn't connected to a dagger. Oh well. Our master craftsmen are nothing compared to the perfection of the Daedra. Look how it shines. Here's your gold, as promised. There's only the shards of the blade left to collect. Exciting, isn't it? I'll just be tending the museum if you need me. I keep gazing into the pommel gem. Not a single flaw. that gonna rip you open Mercy. Mercy. Wrong or right, the Mythic Dawn changed Tamriel's history. They deserve study. Look at them. The legendary sharpness of a Daedric weapon. Marvelous. And here's your payment for the shards. Finally, all the pieces of Merun's razor are in my hands. It's time I let you in on something. There's a fourth piece, that scabbard in the display case, built to house the razor. And there's more. 
I know how to put all the pieces together. We just need to take them to Dagon's shrine and contact the Lord of Change directly. Ever since I was a boy, I felt this strange sense of destiny surrounding the Mythic Dawn cult. And now I know what it is. Don't you see? Fate has led you to me and to the pieces. Dagon has to answer our call. We're so close. I'll meet you at the shrine. I'll meet you at the shrine. Good. You're here. I'll place the pieces on the altar, and Dagon should speak to us. Merun's Dagon, the Lord of Change. We have brought your razor to you. We beg you. Please, bring the blade's full glory to Tamriel again. It's not working. But why don't you give it a try? Just put your hands on the altar. You, mortal, you are worthy of speaking to. You have claimed the pieces of my razor. It has been an amusing game to witness. But Dagon does not declare a winner while there is a pawn on the board. Kill Silas. He and his family have served their purpose. Only Dagon can declare if a pawn is worth keeping. I have spoken. Kill him. Take your rightful place as my champion, or I will crush you. Wait, wait! Don't kill me! There's another way. I can take the pieces back to my museum, seal them in a display case. You get a generous amount of gold, I get to complete my collection, and nobody has to die. Fine. I'm not dying without a fight. Never should have... <laughs> I am pleased, mortal. I will give you my razor. Use it to wreak havoc on Tamriel. Spare me your pitiful pride. You are but a tool of my ambitions, mortal. Never forget that. Place your hands on my altar one last time and you will witness the power of Mehrun's Dagon for yourself. Before you go, mortal, one final challenge. <laughs>
Unless you're here to solve this nightmare problem, I don't need you. That's right, Dawnstar. My Dawnstar is plagued with nightmares. I haven't slept properly in days. That priest of Mara who came here before you says the divines will cure us. Well, until they do, I don't have any business to discuss with outsiders. Don't bother me again unless it's important. Peak Inn features the finest bard in all of Dawnstar. Me. What troubles you, my son? The entire town is being plagued by horrible nightmares. They're in serious danger, but I'm afraid there's little I can do about it. These dreams are manifestations created by the Daedric Lord, Vermina. She has an awful hunger for our memories. In return, she leaves behind nightmares, not unlike a cough marks a serious illness. I must end her terrible influence over these people before the damage becomes permanent. I need to return to the source of the problem, to Nightcaller Temple. Perhaps you'd be willing to assist me in that regard. I've already said too much. If anyone overhears what we're saying, it could start a panic. I would simply ask that you trust me and help me end Dawnstar's nightmares. Your concerns are understandable. Trust is a very difficult commodity to come by these days. I can only give you my word as a priest of Mara that my intentions are honorable. Wonderful. My Lady Mara will be quite pleased. Nightcaller Temple is only a short walk from Dawnstar. Come, we must hurry. Vermina resides in a strange realm known as Quagmire, a nightmarish land where reality shifts upon itself in seemingly impossible ways. From her citadel at the center, she reaches forth to collect our memories, leaving nothing in return apart from visions of horror and despair. Who can say? Perhaps she collects them for display like works of art in a nonsensical art gallery. Whatever the case may be, her intentions are far from benevolent. I promise to answer all of your questions. Follow me. Follow me. It's this way. I work for the Wind Peak Inn. You should head on inside. It feels good to finally have a chance to help these people. Helplessly watching them suffer has been difficult. That hill is our destination. People around here call it the Tower of the Dawn. I'm not familiar with the tower's history, but it was deserted for quite a long time before Nightcaller Temple was established inside. When the temple was active, the priests would rarely be seen in Dawnstar. They preferred to live a solitary existence. The temple had been abandoned for decades now. Ironic, isn't it? A ruin within a ruin. There's a small shrine to Mara I established inside the tower's entry hall. I was hoping to seek spiritual guidance from her. Perhaps my prayers were answered. 
your reason for stumbling across Dawnstar is more than a mere coincidence. by an orc war party seeking revenge. They were being plagued by nightmares just like the people of Dawnstar. No. Knowing they could never defeat the orcs, the priests of Vermina released what they called the Miasma, putting everyone to sleep. I'm concerned that when this place is unsealed, the Miasma will dissipate and they'll awaken, both orcs and priests alike. Miasma was created by the priests of Vermina for their rituals. It's a gas that places the affected in a deep sleep. Because the rituals would last for months or even years, the Miasma was designed to slow down the aging process. Sadly, yes. The longer an individual is exposed to the Miasma, the more the mind can become damaged. Those who've been under the effect of it for extended periods of time had been known to lose their minds entirely. In some cases, a few never awoke at all. Once we get inside, all will become clear. open. Now I can show you the source of the nightmares. Over here. Behold the 
skull of corruption, the source of Dawnstar's woe. We must reach the inner sanctum and destroy it. Come, there's no time to lose. this barrier when the miasma was released. Impossible, actually. I wonder. There may be a way to bypass the barrier, but I must check their library and confirm it can be done. I suppose there's no point in concealing the truth any longer. My knowledge of this temple comes from personal experience. I was a priest of Vermina. Yes, you're right. I should have. But I didn't know what to say. When the orcs raided the temple, I fled. I left my brothers and sisters behind to die. I've spent the last few decades living in regret and seeking redemption for Mara. And by her benevolence, I will right my wrongs. I still have my key to the library. Whenever you're ready, let's move on. Lore holds that the Skull of Corruption holds a constant hunger for the memories of others. The Skull has been out of touch for so long, I fear it's gained the ability to reach out on its own and try to feed. What it does with these memories is just conjecture, and an argument for scholars and historians to this very day. We mustn't tarry. The Skull needs to be destroyed as soon as possible. Just up here. Be careful. We're certain to find more of the Awakened within. There's the likeness of Vermina on the cover. It should be here somewhere. If you'll check the shelves around the balcony, I'll check around the lower level. Yes, my son. What is it I can help with?
Let me take a look. Mara be praised. There is a way past the barrier to the inner sanctum. It involves a recipe for a liquid known as Vermina's Torpor. Yes, the Torpor grants an ability the priests of Vermina called the Dream Stride, using dreams to travel distances in the real world. Quite amazing, yes. Alchemy and the blessings of a divine, distilled down into a... ingestible liquid. Sadly, I have yet to see it function in person. Uh, as a sworn priest of Mara, the elixir won't work for me. The torpor will only work for priests of Vermina, or the unaffiliated. I will not lie to you. There is some risk involved. The last time the torpor was imbibed could have been decades ago. But I swear upon Lady Mara that I will do everything within my power to prevent any harm from befalling you. I believe there is a laboratory in the East Wing. If we proceed there, we should be able to locate a sample. You'll be viewing the memory of another through your own eyes, and with your own body. Those around you will perceive you as normal, and you will find the words you utter may not be your own. Thanks to all of these odd principles, there is quite a lot of debate as to whether this is really a dream, or just the machinations of their mina. I will watch over you as you slumber to ensure your safety. If I deduce anything is amiss, I will use my arts to bring you back. Otherwise, I am uncertain what will end your dream stride. Perhaps when Vermina's curious appetite has been filled. The laboratory adjoins the library. I'm hoping we'll find a sample of the torpor left undamaged. They've been dealt with. We need to find the torpor. It should be in a small bottle, very similar to a potion. I'll begin searching up here. The torpor should be in a tall bottle with dark liquid. If you find it, bring it to me. Yes, my son. What is it I can help with? Yes, my son. I'm relieved you discovered a bottle intact. This place looks as though it was ransacked by the orcs. So, I've taken us this far, but you need to guide us the rest of the way. Drink. Dawnstar's fate rests in that tiny bottle. The longer we wait, the more damage Vermina could be doing to those poor people. I understand your hesitation. But I promise you that it works. Let's continue. 
We still have much to do. The orcs have breached the inner sanctum, Brother Varen. We must hold. We can't allow the skull to fall into their hands. But no more than a handful of us remain, Brother. Then we have no choice. The miasma must be released. The miasma? But, Brother... We have no alternative. It's the will of their Mina. And what about you, Brother Casimir? Are you prepared to serve the will of their Mina? Then it's decided. Brother Casimir, you must activate the barrier and release the miasma. Let nothing stop you. Brother Thorin, we must remain here and guard this skull with our lives if necessary. Agreed to the death. Then let it be done. Farewell, my brothers. be praised. You vanished after drinking the torpor and materialized on the other side. I've never seen anything quite like it. How I envy you. I can only imagine the excitement of seeing history through the eyes of another. Sadly, I am resigned to just reading of its wonders through my research of the skull. Indeed. My reverence for Vermina's machinations should not take precedence over our mission. My apologies. The inner sanctum lies ahead. We must reach the skull and put an end to Dawnstar's troubles. Lead on, my friend. Come. We must get to the skull and destroy it.
Bear, Thoric, you're alive. No thanks to you, Casimir. I no longer use that name. I'm Miranda, priest of Mara. You're a traitor. You left us to die and then ran before the miasma took you. No, I, I, I was scared. I wasn't ready to sleep. Enough of your lies. I can't allow you to destroy the skull, priest of Mara. Then you leave me no choice. For Dawnstar! Ah! <laughs> Is it Mara's will to torment me so? And had they succeeded, Dawnstar's fate would be sealed. You have a unique way of looking at things, my friend. It's time. The skull must be destroyed. If you'll stand back, I'll perform the ritual granted to me by Lady Mara. First. An incantation to remove the barrier. I call upon you, Lady Mara. The skull hungers. It yearns for memories and leaves nightmares in its wake. Grant me the power to break through this barrier and to send the skull to the depths of oblivion. He's deceiving you. When the ritual's complete, the skull will be free, and then Arinder will turn on you. Quickly, kill him now. Kill him and claim the skull for your own. Vermina commands you. Forgive me if I don't appear relieved. This temple has taken its toll on me. In time, I believe I will. I'd constructed a meager shrine tomorrow in the antechamber where we entered. My intention was to spend the rest of my years here, burying the past and praying for forgiveness. But instead, I wish to offer my services to you. If you ever wish to journey with me, I'll be here. There's no need to thank me. What you did was for the people of Dawnstar. If anyone should be thanked, it should be you. Zora's wisdom to you, friend. Yes. I knew Varen and Thoric. They were my friends. Is this punishment for my past? Is it Mara's will to torment me so? And had they succeeded, Dawnstar's fate would be sealed. You have a unique way of looking at things, my friend. It's time. The skull must be destroyed. If you'll stand back, 
I'll perform the ritual granted to me by Lady Mara. First, an incantation to remove the barrier. I call upon you, Lady Mara. A skull hungers. It yearns for memories and leaves nightmares in its wake. Grant me the power to break through this barrier and to send the skull to the depths of oblivion. He's deceiving you. When the ritual's complete, the skull will be free, and then Arinder will turn on you. Quickly, kill him now. Kill him and claim the skull for your own. Vermina commands you. What was that? Is that the best you can do? What are you hiding, priest? I'm not hiding anything. It's closed for a reason. Typical Imperial lies. First, you take away Talos. Now you're keeping us from seeing our honored dead? You and the Jarl will answer for any desecration of my ancestors' bodies. That's enough, Thongor. We're done. If it's about the Hall of the Dead, no. You can't go in there. New to Skyrim? I was confused at first, too. The Nords call their mausoleums the Hall of the Dead. It's where people in the city are buried. Fathers, forefathers, mothers, foremothers. I can't talk about it. Rest assured, the Jarl hears everyone's concerns. You will be able to visit the dead again soon. All right. I was going to suggest the Jarl hire someone to sort this mess out anyway. We've discovered that some of the dead have been... eaten. Flesh has been chewed off. Bones were snapped to get at the marrow inside. We haven't caught anyone or anything yet. It's like it knows when I'm there. If you can get to the bottom of this, the priesthood of RK will reward you. Take my key, and be careful. RK, one of the eight divines, god of the cycle of birth and death. It is his shrine people pray to when they visit the Hall. That his divinity will watch over their ancestors on the way to the next life. Tread lightly in the Hall. We don't know what's in there. blindly into a crypt, smelling of steel and blood, but not fear. I feel the hunger inside of you, gnawing at you. You see the dead, and your mouth grows wet. Your stomach growls. It's all right. I will not shun you for what you are. Stay. I will tell you everything you have forgotten.
You were young when you first tasted human flesh, weren't you? A brother or sister had died? An accident, of course. Then the hunger set in. Curiosity. What's the harm in just one bite? It's okay now. You found a friend who understands you. You can let go of your guilt. A lot of our kind block out the memory of their first meal. The shame is too much. But you don't need to hide anymore. Namira, the Lady of Decay, accepts you for what you are. She has a place for us where we can sate our appetites without judgment. It's inside Reachcliff Cave. But the dead have stirred from their slumber recently, and I was forced here. Meet me there. We all fight our way to Namira's embrace together. Until then, tell the people of Markarth that their dead won't be disturbed anymore. We have bigger plans ahead. Turned. What happened in the Hall of the Dead? Divines preserve you. You're a hero. We'll reopen the hall right away. Here, take my amulet as a reward. Okay, protect you. Markarth's a different place now. You do business here, and you do business with the Thieves Guild. Draugr infesting the Mirror Sanctuary are inside. I was hoping you would say that. further inside. Keep going.
You've done it. The shrine is ours again. Now we need to prepare a grand feast to welcome you to Namira's coven. You will have the honor of bringing a fresh kill for the main course, and I know the perfect person. A priest filled with the taste of an easy life, Brother Verilus from Markarth. Give him this gold. Tell him you need Arcae's help exploring an old cavern for treasure. And when he stands in Amira's presence, she will take care of the rest. Say hello to Verilus for me. Bring Verilus here. The Lady of Decay will do the rest. Bring Verilus here. The Lady of Decay will do the rest. Good day, friend. Keeping well? You are looking for Arke's protection while you delve some dank tomb, I take it? My duties keep me busy in Markarth. I don't know if I can help you. Treasure, you say? I suppose the Jarl won't mind if I'm gone for a little while. Lead on. As always, Aeola. Who... who are you? What's going on? Priest of Arche. I'm your friend. You're my... friend? Yes, I'm your friend, and I've invited you to dinner. I've been invited to dinner? I'm so hungry. Why don't you lay down and rest, while we get the meal ready? I need to lay down. I'll just be a minute. Come with me. Our feast is about to begin. I'm so glad Aeola invited you to dinner. Ah, the new disciple. I hear you have quite the appetite. The meal is on Namira's table. Go ahead. Don't be shy. You should be the one to carve. You've brought us quite the meal. I remember my first feast. I envy you. Mm-hmm. Now this is going to be a good feast. All right, then. I'm so glad Aeola invited you to dinner. Hmm. Ah, the new disciple. I hear you have quite the appetite. 
Don't be shy. You should be the one to carve. He looks so sweet. Go ahead, have the first bite. Mortal. I am Namira, the Lady of Decay. Your consumption of the blood and bile of Arcae's own is pleasing to me. I give you my ring. Wear it, and when you feast on the flesh of the dead, I will grant you my power. Your mockery will be the end of you, and on that day, Another servant will feast on your entrails and discover a ring clenched in her teeth. Be grateful for what time I give you until then. I knew when you walked into the Hall of the Dead that you were special. I knew when you walked into the Hall of the Dead that you were special. And here you are, champion of Namira, keeper of her ring. You're everything I hoped you'd be. It's an honor, champion. Feel free to stay and mingle with your new coven. Namira, watch over you, champion. No. This coven has existed for thousands of years. Namira is a goddess. She has been worshipped since time began. I'm honored to be leading the latest generation of Namira's faithful. Those who have embraced what they are. The dead exist to feed the living. It's an honor, Keeper of the Ring. It's an honor, Keeper of the Ring. You were given Namira's ring? A great honor. You buy a war dog for me? There's a reason why my hounds are so eager to bite into people. Namira spoke to you? I knew this feast was going to be something. The bloodiest beef in the reach. <laughs> it's an honor to see you, the keeper of Namira's ring. I'm the so glad Ayola invited you to dinner. One of my customers? Did you know I inherited the store from my late husband? Shame what happened to him. He had such good taste. Praise to you, champion. Praise to you, champion. Go ahead, eat. I knew it! Ah! At last! 
lost a worthy opponent! <laughs> Nothing! You won't even! This is a surprise. Oh. Lord Boethius faithful. Have you come to test your metal? The Lord of Plants, deceiver of nations, devourer of Trinamine, the Queen of Shadows, goddess of destruction, he who destroys and she who erases. Many are our Lord's lofty names, but they befit only us mortals. Intone her mighty names from now until the end of time. It is for naught. Names mean nothing to our Lord. She only cares for those who care for themselves, whose hearts are full of purpose, whose lives are full of deeds. We are forged by Boethia's example. We carve our will upon the world through our tongues and our blade. You, you are nothing. An empty vapor dispersed by the slightest breeze. Good. Perhaps I've misjudged. The Lord of... Names mean nothing to our Lord. 
If you desire a glimpse of our dark mistress, then this is what you must do. First, prove your tongue can wield a lie. Find someone, gain his trust, lead him to the shrine above. Next, instruct your thrall to touch the pillar of sacrifice. Its magic will ensnare him, rendering him helpless. Then, girded with certitude, plant the ceremonial blade deeply so that the waters of his heart wash over you. If your will is strong enough, it will stir Boethia in her dark mansion, and she will appear before That remains to be seen, but if it is so, and if Boethia appears, then we will welcome you as one of us. If you wish to gain Boethia's attention, you must slay a thrall upon her shrine. You can't beat me! Do you wish to test yourself against me? A well-placed word or a well-placed dagger, both can achieve equal purposes. Though we live in shadow, we carve indelible signs of our past beauty. Though we live in shadow, we carve indelible signs. Them gray skins know what I think of them. They're parasites. They're living in our city under our protection. But what do they do for us? Nothing. I know the High King invited them here, but he didn't ask me or anyone else first. Maybe he should have. Wouldn't surprise me. They've done nothing to help in the fight for Skyrim's freedom. Those Thalmor elves, too. I bet they're working together. Maybe I should round up some men and take us a few prisoners to interrogate. Get out of my face. May your next fight bring you victory, friend. Lead, then. You have my steel. I will do my best to lead the tribe, but I don't know why Malakath chose me. May your weapons be sharp, and your prey fresh. I learn much from Garrick every day. I must learn if I am to take her place. 
You have a grim look. If you wish to gain Boethia's attention, you must slay a thrall upon her shrine. Prefer it boiling. What is it? Show me. Then that is my task. My attention, mortal. That is most unwise. Tell me, why have you slain this one who trusted you here upon my shrine? I am called Boethia. Many names have mortals given me, but I am not interested in names. I am interested only in deeds. A god? Assuredly not. When was the last time you saw evidence of Adra in the world? No. We Daedra are far more powerful than any god. And among my brethren, I am the most feared. Indeed. But I abide only those whose will is aligned to my own. Those who oppose my desires perish in the most dreadful of ways. Is that so? You should be. Though a heart without fear is something I can use. Perhaps you are the one I see. We shall soon find out. Listen, all of you! Hear me. I have need of a warrior. Only the most ruthless, cunning, and agile will do. You have gathered here night after night, sacrificing fools upon my shrine, and sparring aimlessly with yourselves. But which among you truly exceeds the rest? Prove yourselves to me. I have a special task for whichever of you is left standing. Well done. 
You have proven the strength of your will and your tongue's gift for lies. You have shown ferocity and prowess in combat. Now the time has come for a final proving. Are you able to cast aside your honor and strike with the hidden blade? An astute observation. Skyrim is a beautiful and harsh mistress, but her people cling to such a petty notion of honor. My previous champion displeases me. It is time he is replaced, in the traditional fashion. One cannot erase a thing if it has a name to be remembered. You will find him holed up at Knife Point Ridge, where he plays king to bandits and highwaymen. For a time he served his purpose, but that time has ended. He uses my gifts for his own amusement, and the only amusement I tolerate is my own. Kill every single member of his band. Do so as silently and invisibly as you can, for this is not about you. You are to be my instrument in this. Slay him in the coldest of blood. Do not give him the dignity of defending himself. Once his corpse lays cold upon the ground, and all trace of his followers erased, retrieve my ebony mail, a gift fit only for my true champion. May your will carve itself upon the world.
You have done well, my champion. You have earned my respect. A feat few manage and live to tell about. I shall write your name upon the tablet of absolute darkness. You may keep my ebony mail, a token of my appreciation to my new champion. Its gifts will resonate with your talent. Now go. I have strings to pull that require my full attention. You may pursue your own course wherever it leads you. Remember always this. As you will it, so it shall be.
I've been looking for you. Got something I'm supposed to deliver. Your hands only. Let's see here. I've got a letter and a lot of gold. Something about it being your uh, oh, inheritance. Oh, and sorry for your loss. Looks like that's it. Got to go. Nope. Sorry. Nothing. If you need a good rumor or two, I think I... Welcome to the Winking Skeever, friend. I think the Bard's College might be looking for recruits. You should speak to the head of the college, Viarmo, if you're interested. Have you seen that Shrine of Azura? They say that Dark Elves built it after they fled from Morrowind. Sight to see. Remember the Winking Skeever next time you're foot sore. Traitors, civil wars, dragons... <laughs> Those troubles don't cross my doorway, so sit, relax. Azura has seen your coming, Traveler. It was not curiosity, but fate that has led you here. This shrine was built by the Dunma. As our land was scorched by fire and brimstone, Azura's prophecies led us to safety. She is a Daedra. A powerful being who watches from beyond our mortal plane. She has chosen you to be her champion. You must go to a fortress, endangered by water, yet untouched by it. Inside, you will find an elven mage who can turn the brightest star as black as night. It is cryptic, I know, but Azura's signs are never wrong. I believe the fortress may refer to Winterhold. Ask if they know this elven enchanter. She is the goddess of dawn and dusk. Azura sees into the twilight of the future 
and guides her followers through it. My people, the Dunmer, built it. We fled from Morrowind after Vardenfell erupted almost 200 years ago. Those of us who were faithful to Azura were given a vision that led us away from the island before the worst came. This shrine is our thanks to her, that none will forget that she watches over us all. Yes, there were others at first, but Azura's visions tested everyone's faith. One by one, they left, afraid to know their own future. But I refuse to abandon the shrine. The visions are a gift. Azura warns me of tragedy, war, death. Before it happens, I won't leave her guidance. This has all been foreseen, and we must play our part. mug around here somewhere. My days at the college are long behind me, but I prefer to stay close by. Dagor and I have an understanding. He gives me privacy, and I make sure my experiments don't blow up his inn. No. Gods no, not for years. I left Winterhold for some time, and returned to stay here at the inn. I still have research that keeps me busy. And being here in Winterhold ensures I have access to former colleagues. Who sent you? Was it the college? The Jarl? We agreed there would be no more questions. Azura. Gods, it's all finally coming back to haunt me. What do you know about soul gems? They are. Except the gem is always consumed. They're frail, except for one. Azura's Star, a Daedric artifact that allows any number of souls to pass through it. Some of us wanted to find out how. I was working under Malin Varen then. If only we knew what he was really planning. Malin wanted to alter the star. He was dying, disease. He thought he could store his own soul inside, become immortal. It drove him mad. Students started dying. Eventually, the college exiled him. He took a few loyal disciples to Illinolta's Deep and vanished. Look, I don't care who asked you to find the star, but don't take it back to Azura. The Daedra are evil. They're the reason Malin went insane. I mentioned how the star is a soul gem, only it never gets depleted. There's another rule the artifact follows. You can only store white souls in the star belonging to the lesser creatures. Azura's magic won't allow black souls to enter it. As a mortal, Malin's soul was black, so part of his work was breaking past Azura's rules. He was close before... Well, I already told you. Azura is no ordinary Daedra. She commands an entire realm inside of Oblivion. The more Malin worked on the star, the more she was able to damn him. It started slowly at first. Malin would see things that weren't there. Then he would yell at students over words they hadn't said. Then one day I walked in and Malin had killed a student. And in a horrific moment of inspiration, he started using her soul for his work. The college would agree with you. But do you have any idea how many innocent lives were cut short, just so Azura could have revenge? We're nothing to the Daedra. Pawns to move around, praise and punish as they see fit. Until next time.
Azura Star! I knew the Lady of Twilight had sent you for a reason. Hand it over to me. I will ask Azura to restore the star to its original purity. I will commune with Azura. Azura, Mother of Roses, Goddess of Dusk and Dawn, your chosen champion has returned your star to you. She wishes to speak to you herself. Please. Place your hands on the altar, and you will hear her voice. Greetings, mortal. You have followed my guidance through the veils of twilight, and rescued my star from Malan Varan. But his soul still resides within, protected by his enchantments. Until he is purged, my artifact is useless to you. Eventually, the star will fade back into my realm in oblivion. But I doubt you have the hundred or so years it would take to wait. No, only one option remains. I will send you inside the star. You will banish Malin's soul there. Tell me when you are ready, mortal. 
Have faith, mortal. I will be watching over you. Ah, my disciples have sent me a fresh soul. Good. I was getting... hungry. Why? There's something different about you. And who are you to challenge me? I have conquered mortality itself. I've spat in the eyes of the Daedric Lords. This is my realm now. I've sacrificed too much to let you take it from me. Never should have come here. Ah! Lost! The star is free to purify itself. Don't worry, mortal. I will return you before you are cleansed. My star has been restored, and Malin's soul has been consigned to oblivion. You have done well, mortal. As was destined, you are free to use my star as you see fit. Farewell, mortal. Know that Azura will be guarding over the threads of your fate in the twilight. While you were in the star, Azura gave me a vision. Her last, she said. I have never been without Azura's foresight since escaping Morrowind. I don't know what to do. If you need me, I'd be honored to accompany you, Guardian of the Star. It would give me a purpose. Twilight, watch over you, Guardian. No, she said my part was over, that my fate had moved beyond the twilight, and I was on my own. I will tend Azura's shrine when you do not need me. I still have my duties, but for the first time I feel alone. Until next time, Guardian. Warm food, warm drinks, warm beds. I told you what you wanted to know. What else could you want? Stendar's mercy. You found it. Azora's star. Maybe this is my chance to make things right. I can finish Malin's work the way we had meant to before his madness. It would mean cutting the star off from Azora. Only Black Souls would be able to enter it once we finished. Give me a minute to examine the star. I'll see what we'll need to do. These fissures and cracks aren't encouraging. 
Malin obviously was growing more desperate once he left the college. He did it. He actually managed to trap his own soul inside the star, but it's falling apart. It needs more and more souls to sustain itself. The star is being used to sustain Malin's soul. I can't fix it while that fragment of him is inside. Precisely. But it's not as simple as enchanting Malin away. He's put up barriers. Souls are only allowed in, not out. If we were to... somehow... send a soul inside the star, one that was ready to overpower Malin from the inside, I could soul trap you, place you inside the star, then bring you back once Malin has been dealt with. I understand if you need some time to prepare. Let me know when you're ready. Malin's soul should be in the star. Theoretically, purging him will be just like killing a ghost anywhere else. I'll have a magical tether to your soul while you're inside. Once you're done, it'll be as simple as pulling you back into your body. Malin's soul is beyond hope because his body is dead. But I'll be keeping you just slightly alive on this end. But be careful. If you die inside the star, your soul will be disrupted. There's nothing anyone can do for you if that happens. Okay, stand very still. This might sting. First, I'll need to yeah. hold of your soul. Now, take a deep breath. Ah, my disciples have sent me a fresh soul. Good. I was getting... hungry. Why? There's something different about you. And who are you to challenge me? I have conquered mortality itself. I've spat in the eyes of the Daedric Lords. This is my realm now. I've sacrificed too much to let you take it from me. Malin's enchantments are broken. Hold on. I'm going to pull your soul out. Brace yourself. Easy there. The numbness will pass. Just don't strain yourself. We've done it. The star has been cut off from Azora, and Malin's soul finally has some measure of peace, even if it is non-existent. Now, you could use it for what we meant it for, using black souls for enchanting. The black star will never decay, but it can no longer hold the white souls of lesser creatures. You keep it. I'd sooner finally put this chapter of my life behind me. Congratulations. You've changed the fate of a Daedric artifact and lived. All right, then.
Look at my temple lying in ruins. So much for the constancy of mortals, their crafts and their hearts. If they love me not, how can my love reach them? Restore to me my beacon, that I might guide you toward your destiny. to return to Skyrim. But the token of my truth lies buried in the ruins of my once great temple, now tainted by a profane darkness skittering within. The necromancer Malkarin defiles my shrine with vile corruptions, trapping lost souls left in the wake of this war to do his bidding. Worse still, he uses the power stored within my own token to fuel his foul deeds. I have brought you here, mortal, to be my champion. You will enter my temple, retrieve my artifact, and destroy the Defiler. Mortals call it Dawnbreaker. For it was forged in a holy light that breaks upon my foes, burning away corruption and false life. You will enter my shrine, destroy Malkarin, and retrieve this mighty blade. But a single candle can banish the darkness of the entire void. If not you, then someone else. My beacon is sure to attract a worthy soul. But if you are wise, you will heed my bidding. Go now. The artifact must be reclaimed, and Malkarin destroyed. Malkarin has forced the door shut, but this is my temple, and it responds to my decree. I will send down a ray of light, guide this light through my temple, and its doors will open.
Malkarin is vanquished. 
Skyrim's dead shall remain at rest. This is as it should be. This is because of you. A new day is dawning, and you shall be its herald. Take the mighty Dawnbreaker, and with it purge corruption from the dark corners of the world. Wield it in my name, that my influence may grow. It matters not. The plant cares nothing for the rays that bring it the warmth of the sun. As you carry Dawnbreaker, so will my light touch the world. Come on in. Let me know if you need anything, or take a seat by the fire and I'll send someone over. If it's work you need, how about chopping up some wood for the fires? Been hearing some strange tales of the Jarl's children. Say the one's turning wicked, and the others have an ill-favored look to them. Best to keep clear. Need anything else? Just let me know. the gods watch over your battles, friend. Baldur, did you slip out again last night for a drink at the Bannered Mare? Heard about that, did you? Yes, I went out for a pint or two. What of it? These secret visits to the tavern will make you an easy target for an enemy assassin. You should have told me first. Damn it, woman, I'm the Jarl of Whiterun. I won't apologize for talking to my people. You can't protect me every moment of the day. That might be so, but it will never stop me from trying. What is it that you need? Yes, my youngest son. He's a dark child. I don't know what to do with him. He was always a quiet lad, but lately, something has changed. He's become brooding, violent. He won't say a word to me, but I don't know how I upset him. If you could speak to him draw out the truth. I would be immensely grateful. You have my attention? Now, if you don't
don't mind. So, we really must talk. Speak. Another wanderer here to lick my father's boots. Good job. So, the disgusting pig sent you to bother me. One day, I'll tear his face apart so he can leave me alone. <laughs> my father doesn't know anything about me, but I know about him and about the war more than he might think. I know that he still worships Talos. That he hates the Thalmar almost as much as the Stormcloaks do. That he worries about being chased from Whiterun. That he... That I'm... That I don't have the same mother as my brother and sister. The castle is old. Lots of places nobody's been in a long while. Places where you can overhear things. See things. And the Whispering Lady. She won't tell me her name. I've gotten good at listening to keyholes. At the door in the basement, I hear her talking to me. I thought I was caught, but she started telling me even more secrets. But I can't open the door. In the basement. Trust me, you'll see it. I bet she'll talk to you too. All right then. The only grown-ups who talk to me are the kind I don't want talking to me. to carry out my will. The child is spirited, but lacks agency. Regrettably, I cannot reach your plane so directly, but I forgive you for not knowing who I am. Few hear my whispers anymore. I am Mephala, the Lady of Whisper. I tug at the web of connections between mortals. Love, hatred, loyalty, betrayal. The boy was good at sussing out secrets. You, I expect to take a more active role. First, you must open this door. A piece of my power has been locked away behind it, and even my eyes cannot see past the seals. I'd much rather it be in the hands of an ambitious and talented person, such as yourself. The whole of Whiterun is ripe with paranoia and tensions. The Jarl's court is right to fear the power I hold behind this door. The Jarl trusts few, and they will be his undoing. The Dark Child knows of what I speak. Let him guide your path. lady, don't you? I can tell. I told you, I know everything about the castle. For some reason, that door is special. Only two people can open it. Balgruf and Farangar, the court wizard. How you get it from them 
is up to you. Nobody would notice if Farngar went missing, I promise you. Until next time. Kind of nice being in on a secret, isn't it? What is it that you need? Come to Dragon's Reach to discuss the ongoing hostilities, like the rest of the great warriors. Excellent work. Now, I trust you're sharp enough to see that the sword doesn't match the description of the ebony blade you may know. It has languished too long outside the winds of alliance and betrayal. To return to its past glory, it must first Drink the blood of deceit. Your world is admirably seeped in lies and inclinations. My blade is a darling leech that feeds on deceptions and nourishes its master. Seek out those closest to you. The final pluck of their misguided heartstrings will accompany my blade in the song of your grandeur.
Excellent work, child. You call yourself a wizard? I challenge you to a duel. The gods will be the judge of that. Never should have come here. I thought you were a wizard. Hit me with a spell. killed six men single-handed while rescuing my brothers in arms from ambush by an imperial patrol. I'm not too proud to admit that I need a bit of help from time to time. Oh, thank you. Divines bless your kind heart. Until next time. Their tears shine the ebony to a sharpest gleam. My friend died. Things won't be the same without her. Oh, what happened? Speak to me. To oblivion with all of you. Rich piles of dung walking by us like we're not there. Pretending we don't exist. How dare you. Oh, thank you. Divines bless your kind heart. Until next time.
The blood of deceit is a nourishing flow. seen the old is upset about anything. The city really gets to hurt. If you're looking for anything to sell for a fair price, I run the Pog Frog over by the market. is returned to its full glory. Now go forth, child. Continue your tiny subversions against the orders of trust and intimacy. top level was built, eh? no more could be placed. It was and is the maximal apex. How long will it be sung? My feet were set upon the rock, but it turned to mud and drew me down. Ah, the ice entombs the heart, the bane of Kagranak and Degothur. To harness it is to know the fundaments. The Dwemer Lockbox hides it from me. The Elder Scroll gives insight deeper than the Deep Ones, though, to bring about the opening. I have seen enough to know their fabric, the warp of air, the weft of time. But no, it is not in my possession. within the will inside the walls. Here. Well, here as in this plane. Mondas, Tamriel, nearby, relatively speaking. <laughs> On the cosmological scale, well, it's all nearby. One block lifts the other. Septimus will give what you want, but you must bring him something in return. You see this masterwork of the Dwemer, deep inside their greatest knowings. Septimus is clever among men, but he is but an idiot child compared to the dullest of the Dwemer. 
Lucky then they left behind their own way of reading the Elder Scrolls. In the depths of Black Reach, one yet lies. Have you heard of Black Reach? Cast upon where Drimmer City slept, the yearning spire hidden learnings kept. <laughs> Under deep, below the dark, the hidden keep, Tower's Ark. Oft hand, the point of puncture, a first entry of the tapping. Delve to its limits, and Black Reach lies just beyond. But not all can enter there. Only Septimus knows the hidden key to loose the lock to jump beneath the deathly rock. Two things I have for you. Two shapes. One edged, one round. The round one for tuning. Dwemer music is soft and subtle and needed to open their cleverest gates. The edged lexicon for inscribing. To us, a hunk of metal. To the Dwemer, a full library of knowings, but empty. Find Mazark and its sky dome. The machinations there will read the scroll and lay the lore upon the cube. Trust Septimus. He knows you can know. The deepest doors of Dwemer listen for singing. It plays the attitude of notes proper for opening. Can you not hear it? Too low for hearings? To glimpse the world inside an Elder Scroll can damage the eyes or the mind as it has to Septimus. The Dwemer found a loophole as they always do. To focus the knowledge away and inside without harm. Place the lexicon into their contraption and focus the knowings into it. When it brims with glow, bring it back and Septimus can read once more. You look to your left, you see one way. You look to your right, you see another. But neither is any harder than the opposite. But the Elder Scrolls, they look left and right in the stream of time. The future and past are as one. Sometimes they even look up. What do they see then? What if they dive in? Then the madness begins. Observant one, how clever to ask of Septimus. This Dwemer lockbox, look upon it and wonder. Inside is the heart, the heart of a god, the heart of you and me. But it was hidden away, not by the dwarves, you see. They were already gone. Someone else. Unseen, unknown, found the heart, and with a flair for the ironical, used dwarven trickery to lock it away. The scroll will give the deep vision needed to open it. For not even the strongest machinations of the Dwemer can hold off the all-sight given by an Elder Scroll. Dig, Dwemer, in the beyond. I'll know your lost unknown and rise to your depths.
food. This one was a trap for us.
have been enough death? Of course you want me to leave. Just waiting for me to turn my back. So you can have all the glory for yourself. Huh? What was that?
swimmer in the beyond. When the top level was built, eh? no more could be placed. It was and is the maximal apex. Ah, the box contains the heart, ah, the essence of a god. I have devoted my life to the Elder Scrolls, but their knowledge is a passing awareness when compared to the encompassing mind of divinity. The Dwemer were the last to touch it. It was thought to have been destroyed by the Nerevarine, but my lord told me otherwise. The Daedric Prince of the Unknown, Hermaeus Mora, I thought there were no secrets left to know, until I first spoke to him. He asks a price, to work his will. A few murders, some dissent spread, a plague or two, for the secrets I can endure. In time, he brought me here, to the box. But he won't reveal how to open it. Maddening! How long will it be sung? My feet were set upon the rock, but it turned to mud and drew me down. Give it quickly! Extraordinary! I see it now! The ceiling structure interlocks in the tiniest fractals. Dwemer blood can loose the hooks, but none alive remain to bear it. A panoply of their brethren could gather to form a facsimile. A trick! Something they did not anticipate. No, not even them. The blood of Altmer, Bosmer, Dunmer, Falmer, and Orsimer. The elves still living provide the key. Bear you hence this extractor. It will drink the fresh blood of elves. Come when its set is complete. Come closer, bask in my presence. I am Hermaeus Mora. I am the guardian of the unseen and knower of the unknown. I have been watching. Your continuing aid to Septimus renders him increasingly obsolete. He has served me well, but his time is nearing its end. Once that infernal lockbox is opened, he will have exhausted his usefulness to me. When that time comes, you shall take his place as my emissary. What say you? Indeed, speak with me when the box has been opened and all shall be revealed. Hold it. This here's a toll road, see? You're gonna have to hand over, say, 
200 gold if you want to use our road. You know, now that I think of it, that sounds fair. Just shove off before the others notice. What was that? This is a surprise. That's privileged information. Now, move along.
was built, eh? No more could be placed. It was and is the maximal apex. I can almost hear them. I feel their life energy. Come, I will make the mixture. It contains the knowledge of the ages, as revealed to Sarsis, my loyal servant. For hundreds of years, it's been shut away from the world. Septimus was a useful tool for unleashing it. Now, it is in your hands. Let us work wonders together.
Aha, it is the champion of Namira. I was just about to eat. Here, you should have the first bite. to help me. I was attacked by a vampire. Do you have a potion or something that can cure this before I turn? Here, I'll show you on your map so you can stay away. Please, if you can help me, let me know or get out of my way so I can try to find a priest. And get out of my way. I have to get to a town and find a priest. in the wound. Oh, proper ones curl their noses, but it's pus that drinks foul humors and restores the blood. I worship Periat, yes, because sometimes the world can only be cleansed by disease. Not everyone has the stomach required to entreat, my lord, but Cash likes you, friend. There is a way Periat may speak to us who will take him in. If you wish to commune with him, we'll need the incense. Yes, the incense. Fetch for me a death bell flower, one silver ingot, a flawless ruby, and some vampire dust. Then, I will show you how.
Yes. This one needs something? Ah, have you? Let Cash have them. Yes, yes, this will create a fine view. That should do. Now, inhale deeply. How can I assist? Hmm? Breathe deep, mortal. I would have you hear me well. So let these vapors fill your lungs. sense, but no more poison than a fool after too much wine. I have watched you for some time, you know. The decisions you've made intrigue me, and I wonder if you are the proper agent for a task. Of mine. I sent a blessing to Mundus, a wasting plague that infected a scattering of Breton villages. One of my monks, the elf or Chendor, was sent to gather these afflicted. He shepherded them into Bathardons for me, but has since lost his way. I will not stand for betrayal. I want you to go to Bathardons and kill Orchendor in my name. An impertinent question. The elf must die. Either carry out my will or do not. You are not the only mortal agent I could choose. The pettiness of mortals. I had almost forgotten. I can grant you a powerful token for this task. An escutcheon of Dwemer make, capable of shielding you from both the spell and sword. Return when the elf lies dead, and it will be yours. So you have, mortal. Go now. Kill Orchendor. Need something? Not far, not far. This one looks upon it on clear days. Look to the west, at the foot of the mountain. The dwarven ruins there. But Adams. Orchendor? Cash know him. He is an overseer, shepherd, gathers the afflicted, contains the festering wound. Orchendor and his afflicted are meant to stand ready, awaiting Periite's command to cover the world with his blessing. May you walk on warm sands.
This one needs something? The vapors are waning, but not yet gone. Take a breath. Periad will speak if he sees fit. Mm-hmm. Hmm. <laughs> 
Kde jsi jist? Hm? Hm?
damn mages blew up Winterhold. 